Hi, I'm Pastor David Wendell, Assistant to the Bishop for Ministry and Ecumenism in the North American Lutheran Church. The sermon today is for the fifth week of Easter. The Gospel reading is from Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, the first through the eighth verses. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you will, and it should be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus goes on in the next verse to say, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jesus said at the Monday Thursday meal, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. In a recent conversation on discipleship with a Lutheran pastor on the staff of one of our few Lutheran megachurches, he shared that in his congregation, from their mission statement to their strategies, to their congregational structure, it's all to be about discipleship. They say it's all about discipleship, making and equipping and empowering disciples. What that means, translated into actual congregational practice, said the pastor, is being involved in church programs. He continued, at our Lutheran version of a, of a mega church, discipleship means being active in church programs, and we're all about developing programs that will involve people, all people. In fact, the pastor told me, the latest ministry, he said, is an arts and crafts ministry on Wednesday nights. It's not really a ministry, he said, it's a program. And if discipleship equals involvement in a church program, anything that involves people will do. Now, contrary to most pastors who lift up that model of discipleship equating to church programs, of discipleship equating to church programs that involve people, this particular pastor was not affirming that notion of discipleship. In fact, he was expressing frustration that discipleship in much of American Christianity today has become nothing more than involvement in various church programs and activities. And so his is a frustration that grows out or grows from Jesus' own words about discipleship. It's a frustration that comes because many Christians ignore Jesus' words in our reading for today, where he says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so become my disciples. 
you look at the landscape of American Christianity and wouldn't you think that Jesus said something like, my father is glorified by this, that you get people involved in church programs and activities, and so then they become my disciples. The model for success in ministry in many churches in America today is get people in the door, get them to join the church, get them involved in programs and activities. That's how churches grow. That's how they're successful, at least that's the theory. That's how they gain and retain members, through involvement in programs and activities. And then we might say on the other side of that thinking, you have the many congregations in the North American Lutheran Church where we're actually trying to cut down on programs just for the sake of programs. We have many of our congregations where we don't want programs unless they serve a spiritual, Christ-centered purpose. And why do so many of our congregations seem to be going against the grain today, against that grain of the kind of megachurch mentality of programs and activities? Why are many of our congregations, not just in the North American Lutheran Church, but throughout Christianity, refusing to build bigger and better programs just aimed at involving more and more members of the institution? Because in the North American Lutheran Church, truly, we are about discipleship. We are about discipleship that comes from bearing much fruit. And what is that discipleship? What is the fruit that we are to bear through which we truly become Jesus' disciples? Well, there are many good fruits that we are to bear as disciples. But it all grows out of one thing. And Jesus is talking about that at the meal on his last night, on Monday, Thursday. It's love. We read in the second reading for today, 1 John, where it says, The commandment we have from God is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Beloved, John says, let us love one another because love is from God. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. You see, being disciples is really all about love. We're called to do lots of things as disciples, but it all grows out of love. When we love, we're bearing good fruit and we're being Jesus' disciples. The Great Commission, for example, go therefore into all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that Jesus has taught us. That actually is intended to and always must grow out of love. Love for all nations and peoples, our love for our Lord that causes us to want to want all people in the world to hear the good news of salvation in and through Jesus Christ. To serve as a medical professional, for example, in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, that's good fruit. But it's good fruit because it grows out of Love for the hurting, the hungry, the ill, and the dying in our world. It grows out of the love of God that is in us, that calls us to love our neighbor and our enemy because God first loved us. To be a pastor, for example, is hopefully to bear good fruit and be Jesus' disciple, but you become a pastor out of Love for Jesus, the good shepherd, and love for the flock that he came to save. Discipleship is all about bearing good fruit that grows out of, that grows from love. 
But I want to remind you, you don't have to be a medical professional overseas or a pastor or preach the gospel in Africa to bear good fruit and be Jesus' disciple. On the contrary, few of us are called to that kind of discipleship. It just may be that those grandiose, monumental public forms of discipleship are, are secondary to the discipleship that each and every one of us is called to every day of, day of our lives, that of bearing fruit by those we meet in our everyday activities, loving and caring for those who are closest to us in our home, in our neighborhood. I always appreciate Martin Luther with regard to doing good works, bearing good fruit. Luther, who again and again reminds us that being a pastor or a monk, traveling overseas to spread the gospel, those are fine things, but the greater challenge is to love your spouse, to care for your parents and your children to be a respectful and trusting coworker, to show love in one's daily speech and actions to everyone we meet. In many ways, it, it might be easier to pack up and go minister to people in far distant lands than it is to love and care for your husband or your wife day after day without fail, being patient, kind-hearted, a good listener, in some ways, it might be simpler to spend all your time pastoring a congregation than to go home and patiently help your children with their homework, deal with rebellious teenagers as you're trying to mold and shape them to be faithful Christians. Wouldn't it be more fun to get involved in the arts and crafts ministry at church every night of the week rather than dealing with home and family issues? having coffee with a neighbor who's going through a painful divorce, visiting a single person who's alone in the hospital. The hardest fruit to bear is often the fruit of loving and caring for those closest to us. That is truly the greatest challenge, the greatest fruit of all, the greatest form of discipleship, loving daily, husband, wife, Parents, children, our next door neighbor, our co worker. To love those closest to us. To love those we interact with day after day, hour after hour, minute by minute, takes great commitment and energy and fortitude and patience. Which is why being discipleship making congregations today is no longer about developing congregational programs and activities. That's not what discipleship is really about. Because we don't want to involve folks in just so many time-consuming programs and activities that we drain them and deter them and keep them from true discipleship, which is loving others because God loves us. Our desire as Christians today, and yes, as Christians in the North American Lutheran Church today, is to focus on the main things. Worship of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christian education, learning, and teaching, all that Jesus teaches us and commands us. And then sending people out, sending people home, sending you to your families and friends and neighbors with enough energy and life left to love. Yes, to love as the scriptures tell us to love. To love as Christ loves us. To love your enemies and your friends even in especially to love those around you who need love as well every day. That is truly the fruit that is born by Jesus' disciples, which brings glory to the Father who created us 
because that's what it's all about. Love. Love of God, love of neighbor. Love that is good fruit that makes disciples and so glorifies the Father in heaven. Let us love one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.